Some of the most interesting historical stories come from past experiences dealing with outer space. Scientists have made significant discoveries over the years, performed valuable experiments, and they experience failures as well. All of these experiences have been combined to help scientists continue making new discoveries. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three historical events from space. Vanguard TV3 As part of the International Geophysical Year from 1957 to 1958, scientists planned to conduct geophysical studies all around the world. Scientists everywhere agreed to exchange any information they learned freely because this information could be used to make important scientific discoveries. One of the goals of the program was to launch a satellite into orbit. They quickly got work onto launching their own satellites, called test vehicles. The project was managed by the Navy and the Department of Defense, and it was funded by the National Science Foundation. The satellites were built at the Naval Research Laboratory, also known as the NRL. They used mercury cell batteries, radio transmitters, a temperature-sensitive crystal, and solar cells. The launch vehicles were also built at the NRL. All the tests were performed there too. The Vanguard TV-3 had a few different purposes. One was to test the capabilities of three-stage launch vehicle, called the Vanguard. This vehicle was designed to lift through the densest layers of the atmosphere in around 130 seconds. It would then ultimately rise up to 480 kilometers above the Earth. After the final stage, it would boost the Vanguard TV-3 into orbit at around 180,000 miles per hour and keep a consistent distance from the Earth. The Vanguard Test Vehicle 3, or TV-3, would be used for research to find out how the environment impacts satellites and their orbits around the Earth. While orbiting, it would also help researchers study micrometeoroid impacts, and it would take geodetic measurements. The original plan was to launch several of these satellites during the International Geophysical Year. This was so researchers could get a fuller picture of these studies and measurements. The Vanguard TV-3 was launched on December 6, 1957, in Florida. It made around 4 feet off the ground before its main engine lost power. It exploded as it landed back on the launch pad due to the fuel tanks rupturing and the satellite was destroyed. Although there were many theories, no one could quite figure out exactly why this happened. However, it was believed to have had something to do with a low fuel tank pressure, or a loose fuel line. The timing couldn't have been worse. While working on the project, the Soviet Union surprised everyone by successfully launching Sputnik 1 that October. They then launched Sputnik 2 the following month. The United States government felt more pressure to get their project off the ground and launch their own satellite. They wanted to get ahead in the race to space. This failed project truly added insult and was a disappointment for all Americans. Today, the satellite can be found on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. The first image of Earth from the Moon in the 1960s, NASA was preparing to send astronauts to the moon for the first time. In order to do this safely, they needed high-resolution photos to make sure the surface of the moon was safe to land on, and to help them pick potential landing spots. These photos would help prepare the astronauts for their trip to the moon, and this would take place in 1969. Boeing and Eastman Kodak had already developed a spacecraft for the Department of Defense that contained its own camera system, and researchers were able to use this for their mission. NASA launched Lunar Orbiter 1, the first of five lunar orbiters, on August 10, 1966. It took the orbiter 92 hours to get close enough to orbit the moon. Some described it as flying photography labs. The orbiters took photos with dual lenses, one taking wide angles at a medium resolution, and the other taking high resolution photos of small details. They took photos, developed and processed them themselves. The whole process was similar to developing photos from Polaroid cameras. The photos were then scanned and transmitted back to Earth through radio signals. Using photos from all five orbiters, researchers were able to put together a somewhat detailed map of around 99% of the Moon. They also succeeded in finding at least 20 potential spots to land. During this mission, NASA had the idea of pointing Lunar Orbiter 1's camera at the Earth. 
There were risks involved, and they weren't sure if they'd be able to reposition the camera once they did this. They ultimately decided it was worth the risk, since getting an image of the Earth like this would be a significant achievement. They agreed that no one would be blamed if their plan didn't work. Lunar Orbiter 1 took the first image of the Earth from the Moon on August 23, 1966. This was during its 16th orbit. It was taken from around 236,000 miles away and shows half of Earth covered in darkness. Before this, there was only ever one photo taken of Earth, taken by a satellite in 1946, but that photo only depicted a grainy image of the surface of the Earth. The photo taken by Lunar Orbiter 1 showed the Earth as a round planet taken from deep space. This photo changed the way people viewed the Earth. It brought into perspective the fact that Earth is just another planet floating in the galaxy. While scientists had only really been focused on looking at other planets and moons, this photo showed the importance of viewing our own planet from other perspectives. The value of this photo couldn't be overstated. Miss Baker the Monkey By 1959, scientists in the United States had been attempting to send animals to space for around 10 years already. Every mission proved to be unsuccessful for one reason or another. In one case, a monkey's parachute failed and it died on impact. In another, a monkey fell into the sea and was never found. Still, there was one case where the monkeys did in fact come back to Earth safely. However, they hadn't been high enough to reach space. Unfortunately for America, the Soviet Union had already proved to be successful in this mission. They had at least 30 cases where animals returned from space alive. American scientists wanted to catch up and were determined to have this kind of successful mission as well. Miss Baker was a squirrel monkey and Miss Abel was a rhesus monkey. The American space program purchased a group of monkeys and tested them to see which one could withstand hardships like confinement and electrodes. Miss Baker and Miss Abel stood out amongst the group and were chosen to go to space. The monkeys wore motoring equipment and were placed into small metal capsules so they were unable to move around too much. Researchers wanted to monitor their life signs and mental state during the trip to see how it could translate to human astronauts in the future. They were launched into space in a Jupiter missile from Florida on May 28, 1959. They reached an altitude of more than 300 miles above the Earth. 16 minutes later, they became the first animals the United States sent to space that came back alive. The monkeys were retrieved from the Atlantic Ocean by the Navy vessel USS Kiowa. Military personnel checked the monkeys and found no injuries or any kind of problems. Miss Baker and Miss Abel quickly gained worldwide fame for being the first animals from the United States to successfully go into space and come back. They were even featured on the cover of Life magazine. Just four days after their return to Earth, medical personnel removed the electrodes from Miss Abel. Unfortunately, she died during the procedure. Her body is on display in her flight capsule on Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. A sign telling her story was posted at the Monkey Island in Independence, Kansas, where she was born. While both monkeys made it home alive, Miss Baker seemed to gain all the fame. She spent most of her time at the Naval Aerospace Medical Center in Florida, then at the US Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Miss Baker received hundreds of letters from fans. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals awarded her a Medal of Honor and a Certificate of Merit. They had supported her being sent into space because they believed it would pave the way for scientific developments in the future. She was given the best possible life for a monkey. She was even married twice. Miss Baker died in 1984 due to kidney failure. More than 300 people attended her funeral. She was buried beside the US Space and Rocket Center next to her first husband. To this day, her fans still leave bananas at her headstone as a tribute to her service. So what do you make of these interesting historical events? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.